my turn! Pick on some on your own side! Hey everybody, it's Marshall Monkey here, and I'm almost done catching up with Legends of Tomorrow. This is gonna be my Dominators crossover video. I know it's late, but let's just just bear with me, okay? Just bear with me. Um, so yes, I'm also uploading a new Monkey Justice episode, but I don't know when that will be up. Probably by the end of the next Legends video and the next Arrow video that I'm going to be posting. And then Vixen will come at some point in the week or later. So let's get to this review. Now, I did like this episode. I actually think that this is one of my favorite Dominators crossover episodes. This one and the Flash episode, because this one's really... It really does bring the crossover full circle, and I like that this episode has a lot of an X-Men kind of vibe from it. Oh, uh, vibe, get it? Meh. Um, but yeah, it does have an X-Men feel to it by the end of the episode, because I feel like they're doing that kind of thing where like the government gets involved, it's the whole metahuman thing. I do like where they're going with it, um, so it was really interesting to see how they would take that. Also, we get to see a little bit of time travel in this episode, obviously, because it's the Legends. Um, but I do like how everybody else... You know, it's been fun seeing them together. I like how Oliver was kind of upset with Car of this episode just because he didn't want her fighting alongside them because he doesn't like what he does not understand. And that's pretty much everybody here. And I think that Oliver has a right for that because it's weird. You know, with metahumans, um, a girl with a magic totem, you know, an alien. Like, there's just so much going on here that Oliver, you know, had to cope with. So I like by the end of the episode that him and Kara are good. And I also like the Easter egg where they're like, hey, remember when it was just us? When it was like Sarah and Oliver back on Arrow because Arrow was the first show. But they do go back in time, the Legends do, and Felicity and um, uh, Cisco, which I thought was really interesting. But they go back in time to stop the Dominators. We do see Nate in his new suit. It looks amazing. Hello? It looks incredible. I like that he has this comic book suit. I think that it's nice that he is now an official part of the team now that he has his suit, of course. Um, but I do like that they go fight the Dominators back in the tape, like in the tape from the Flash episode back in like, what was it, the 50? No, not the 50s, I don't know when it was. I hate history, but, um, anyway, they go back in time to that one tape where the Dominators first showed up on Earth and they end up fighting them, um, which was interesting to see, like, uh, they captured a Dominator, I guess? What didn't they capture him? And then, like, they went to the ship, and, like, Cisco even repaired it in this episode. It was really weird. Um, but one thing I liked is that Cisco mentioned that Ray might be getting a new suit, or, like, improvements on a suit, and that Cisco messed up the timeline. So he had caused a huge apparition after he had saved the alien. And so realizing that this action would you know, cause all this craziness and time travel, he realizes what Barry really did and then forgives him. So I loved it. I loved that it was turned the tables. Like, I kind of saw it happening, like, in the episode in the beginning, but when it actually happened, I was like, you know what, Cisco? I'm glad you had this experience because not only did you learn from Barry's mistake by making the same mistake, but you really did uh, get to experience, you know, how time travel works. And I think that all the characters should because it's really interesting when they do these crossovers with Legends, how that works out. But well, back to what I was saying about the X-Men kind of feel from the episode, the tone of, like, X-Men, the government. I like that the guy from back a long time ago, when the Legends and Felicity and Cisco had to come to their rescue, I like that that guy ended up being the same government official that cornered Barry and the others in this scene here. Because it was like, oh my gosh, this is kind of like an X-Men feel. Because they're talking about the metahumans, we're talking about how they've sprung up. And I like at the end of the episode, they get honored with the medals which I thought was also pretty interesting, like the honorary medals, kind of like how they did in Justice League War, I think of that movie, if you've ever seen the animated movie. And also kind of what they did for, you know, the X-Men, talking about how they've basically been, you know, mutants, but it's many humans, right? Lily. Now, I like this character. I like Lily. I don't know if she's a real comic book character or not, but I do like that Lily was in this episode, and I like how the time apparition is basically like Stein's afraid of losing her. I thought that was really interesting too. And I can't wait to see what they use her for. I know they're gonna use her for some other purpose, but I'm excited to see what that is exactly. So at this point, I'm wondering what they're gonna use Lily 
for? Like, are they going to use a death scene for Lily for Stein? Are they going to, you know, have her join the Legends? Like, what's really going to happen? So that's probably what I'm looking forward to the most is seeing with that arc for Stein is what's going to happen to her, uh, his daughter. But overall, I loved the ending to the crossover. I also loved the big fight scene at the end with all the Dominators, too. And that was fantastic. And I also loved the Easter egg shout-out that Ray gave because Brandon Routh, who plays Ray played Superman and he was all like, she kind of looks like my cousin to Supergirl. So I think that was also a fantastic nod as well. But what did you guys think of the episode? Comment down below and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.